will enjoy uh, his stories. Um, for those of you who are not aware of our history, I think you're in for a good treat tonight. So, um, I'd like to welcome Richard Munch. some highlights of my life uh, before he's very short hopefully and I wanted to uh, I, you know I found it real hard to believe that I'm standing here four years later in, in Virginia uh, I just you know it's surreal in many ways and uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I want to start off very simply. Uh, everybody's got cell phones, and, uh, iPhones, and uh, all this stuff. Uh, put, it, put it away for the next 40 minutes so, so you can understand what we went through. <laughs> Everything in the beginning, there was essentially three ways to communicate with the phone. By mail or fax. That's basically it. And, uh, there was really no other way. There was no, I don't think there were any beepers. Or, uh, so everything was done in a, in a very slow pace. Uh, you know, for instance, we were just discussing the logo and how it began or where it came from. And the logo was basically uh, designed by Alan and Brazini in Chicago. And he sent me a draft of the logo, and I was so excited to see something real. <laughs> Let's go with it. He was always concerned we weren't going to. I was going to like it. But uh, our first logo uh, was, you know, pretty cool. I flipped over. So, anyway. Uh, I had to get involved with was uh, beach erosion. And I only show this one photo because it took about a thousand years ago. But it showed, you know, the, the, the way the beach was eroding in Coney Island and Rockaway. Uh, so I did a full study at Rockaway Beach. And then I turned around and 
next slide. I guess we're going to do it one by one. Next slide is this Rockaway coaster sitting there. And I walked over. And this is during the winter. And uh, that's my first photograph of a roller coaster in 1972, 73. Uh, I was intrigued. I, I was intrigued with the architecture. I was intrigued with the design. I, I thought, wow, this whole thing takes up a city block. And, uh, you know, but I was, ter I was terrified of coasters. I, I, as a kid, I was a five, six year old kid. My mother took me on a little dipper and scared the heck out of me. <laughs> so we ended up at a beach party down here in 73. And uh, we went over to Playland in Rockaway and I rode it uh, quite a bit. We rode it until uh, we ran out of money. <laughs> 25 cents a ride. So that's Rockaway Playland, uh, the coaster. Uh, my <laughs> I had a friend, uh, my friend was uh, the priest for our church, uh, Reverend Faust, and uh, he uh, saw my interest in coasters and we ended up on two separate tours, visiting about 30 parks on each tour. Uh, I got my information through IAP, I said, there were no guidebooks, there was nothing, obviously no internet. So you did all your, you did your real research in the library. You know. This is a this is a picture of Bob Fouts with uh, Erwin Bettel, B E T T E L, and uh, this is down at Pontchartrain Beach. I'm at the top. Oh. 
uh, I got to be very good friends with the management there, and uh, that became like a second home. Mortuary, the racer at Kings Island. Again, the cyclone. My future wife, Carol, and Jerry Mendito. Then there was this opening in 1975. Yeah. Called the Rebel Yell. You like that tie? I gotta lose some weight, then to catch up with that. Anyway, the roller coaster came along. Uh, the movie. Uh, I had met the uh, director, it was James Goldstone. I met him at Six Flags in America. He was doing a, a you know, site tours for the movie, and I talked with him while I was there. Then they obviously went into production. This is while they were at, Rebel, at uh, King's Domain. But the, this would be late, uh, sometime in 76, 1976, they did all the filming. And what's fun, you, you, you can keep the next one. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there's Tim Bottoms at one of our events. Uh, Goldstone contacted me about a, a position, a, a, he was looking for a coaster with a pier. That's my daughter with, uh, that's Goldstone's widow and uh, Bottoms with my daughter Jennifer. Uh, you can hold up. The, uh, so Goldstone contacted me through Gary Curiazzi. Uh He was looking for a location for a pier uh, with a roller coaster. Uh, the only ones like on the East Coast, not the West Coast, East Coast. So I think I, I thought of Paragon, but didn't have. And then uh, you know, Saturn Rock was gone. Uh, Cody Island has a pier, but the coaster is far away. Uh, Ocean View was the one that came up, and he, he went to see all of them. He actually visited the following week. He said, "We're going to be. We got to deal with Ocean View. We're going to film there, and that's why they filmed the uh, disaster scene." So I got a chance to go down there uh, during the filming of the uh, disaster, when the track is blown up and the train falls off, and because of difficult uh, mechanical, yeah, there was technical difficulties with the uh, exploding device. It was all you know rigged and what have you. And, uh, I walked. I walked away because I was sort of bored. And of course it all happened when I wasn't there. When I came back, the two stunt actors got very, were critically, almost, almost critically injured. I mean, they broke their pelvises. The train went too far and hit the concrete uh, walkway. Uh, and Goldstone was, uh, I, I was sort of ushered out after that. Everybody just went down there. And uh, Goldstone was really, he was devastated by that. And they were wondering if the picture would just finished, but it did. Okay. The marathon. Here's the official, I believe the official name for the marathon. That's a long, long one. We just call it the marathon. Uh, anyway, I, I got to talk to uh, the Universal Studios publicity director was Booker McClay. And Booker, there he is on the right. Booker had been in, in Hollywood a long time. He had worked with a lot of the big pictures. Uh, you know, publicity for the big pictures of Universal. Uh, he contacted me, and if you read that, if you read the second paragraph, it says, "Thanks for uh, having Mike Boozley call me." So I got in touch with Mike Boozley, who I didn't know. I knew the, the marathon he had done in, in, uh, in, on the cyclone, but I did not know Mike. I got in touch with Mike. And I said, "Mike, do you want to drive down with me?" He goes, "Oh yeah." So we drove down to Virginia. I called Booker McClay at his hotel because we, we were going to stay with him. We're staying in the hotel, and, and when I called Booker, he said, uh, I said, this is Richard Munch. And he goes, Richard Munch hasn't come yet, stop bothering me. You know, so, <laughs> so, we ended up in a little, you know, one of these roadside hotels for 20 bucks, and it was fine. Uh, you can keep going. We had a meeting the morning the morning before the marathon. We had a meeting. There's Mike, uh, that's Roy Brashears, and at the bottom is Jim Bruce. There was, at the end, there was a total of 14 people in this marathon. 
the record at the time was unofficially around 76 hours. So here we have meeting. The gentleman on the very right is Jim King. He's a local DJ. No lobbies at the bottom. And Jack Yeager was the uh, publicity director for King's Dominion. So close-ups of the famous marathoners. And Bruce had set the record on the Swamp Fox uh, the previous summer. Noel will be on the right, Mike Bootley on the left. This is a group photo. Hey, I'm wearing a tie. <laughs> Mike and I took a walk around the park, and this is what before the lake was filled in. So there's our there's our nemesis up there. We got invited the night before the marathon. We were invited to Richmond to see the actual film. So we went down there. It was in, you have to remember the film was in sense around. So the whole the whole theory vibrated. I, I didn't think I was really in a roller coaster. I thought it was more of a bomb thing or something. <laughs> <laughs> General Manager of King's Dominion, a lot of you probably know who he is. I'm guessing some of you know him. Anybody? Dennis Spiegel. That's Dennis today on the right. And Dennis, I said to Dennis, how much money have you made off a roller coaster? And he said, he pulls a check out. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take a guess how much is on that check? How much? Pretty close. <laughs> Go ahead, the next one. <clears throat> I think it was quarterly, so he was making about a hundred dollars a year for his appearance in the film. And then Dennis and I talked about the marathon. He doesn't remember much about it, so it was interesting. But he remembers me. Uh, each of uh, each of the fourteen of us got a number. Uh, George and that's James Goldstone on the right, the director. I became good friends with James. He was a really very pleasant, very down to earth guy. Uh, you guys will remember, if, if you're Star Trek, anybody Star Trek here? A lot of Star Trek fans? He did, the, he did the initial pilot. He did the pilot for Star Trek. And he didn't like the fact, he didn't like the notoriety. Everybody was, oh, he did it. He like, ah, I'm doing other things. But he also did a film on Kent, the Kent State shooting. And ironically, my daughter graduated from there. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, anyway, the, the numbers were significant because if you had number one, you had first choice of seat. And I was very concerned because I knew if I didn't want to sit in the front or the back. I got to go back once. I was there to document this. I came down to document this, this marathon and I got sort of pulled into it. And I said, all right, I'll write a couple of, I'll write a couple of hours and then we'll call it quits. So now you can go forward. So anyway, I got number eight. I got a seat in the middle. I was very happy. Each of us got one seat. There were no seat dividers, there were no headrests, there was a, one single lot bar. So, anyway, they took the group photo here. Uh, the only, I think the only person missing is Paul Greenwald, who was from there to get his vest on, over on the side. Okay, and then the nurse got involved, and George, George Siegel liked this nurse. I don't know. <laughs> he was in love with the nurse, so everybody else would just sort of stand there. Uh, but you see Joe Bonner on the left, right above the guy that looks like uh, Larry from the Three Stooges. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the three, uh, well, everybody's in the photo. Let's go, except for uh, Paul Grimble. Okay. Here's Joe Bonner, one of the original uh, charter members. We moved along uh, within the first uh, hour and a half. We lost three members. Uh, Roy Bashir was, I think, less than about 40 minutes. And V. Wertheim was a grandmother of around 56, 57 years old. She, she only wanted to ride an hour. She did her thing and got off. 
And then there was a third person, and I can't think what it is, but they were they were using these green buckets to throw up in. <laughs> and I, I started to get concerned because I'm thinking, what's going to happen to me? You know, but I was feeling fine, you know. We started around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And, uh, I was feeling fine. So here we are riding. Uh, no lobby with the helmet. Uh, he, had a, he had a crew of three people. They were bringing them food and jackets. And they were sitting there like, what about us? So the, the daytime was great because you, you rode with the public, you had fun with them, they were yelling, what are you doing? You know, you had a good time. The big joke was, hey, your wheel just came off. <laughs> so we had fun there. There I am. I'm not too, I'm not too happy about this. <laughs> so, anyway, Paul Greenwald, uh, that's the assistant to all the time. It's Paul. There, the, that shirt he made. <laughs> You have, to, you have to remember, you know, uh, Paul, Paul drove down almost the same day because he had heard about it and he said, yeah, come on down. He'd drive from Niagara Falls down to Goswell. So he was already exhausted by the time he got there. Uh, no Obi, again, you know, fully, fully, he had all of them. You know, there's Mike Boothley right behind him. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Mike, I'm trying to ride right with Mike and Obi is like, you know, Mike says to me, this guy, this guy's going to last for a thousand hours. I mean, he didn't get, he didn't get wrong. So we, we continue, and we have a medical staff, and we have a counter, we have the operator. There's uh, Mike getting his blood pressure about every about every two hours. We got our blood pressure checked, and uh, there is. A, you notice know, Mike has a pillow. My mother gave me a nice feather pillow. Um, I used it, and then when I woke up, I slept for about five hours on the ride. And when I woke up, the pillow was gone. And it was sitting under the first drop in the mud. And I told my mother I didn't bring it home, and she was very upset. So we're down to seven mar marathoners at this point, and uh, you can go to the next one. Oh, uh, the cold night. We had a cold night. Uh, Temperature in Richmond went down to the unnatural temperature of 44 degrees Fahrenheit. And 44 at 60 miles an hour is about 28 in the windshield. Uh, T-shirts don't do it. So we were freezing. When we get off, they're bringing us hot chocolate, and I'm like, this isn't working. Uh, around 11 o'clock, they brought three jackets over from the freezer, uh, the, you know, the meat, the meat locker. And so, Obi already had one. See, they got the cigarette there, but Bruce and I, Bruce on the left, we, we put the suits on, and I'll tell you one thing, they were warm. That smelled bad. <laughs> anyway, we survived. There we are. <laughs> we did everything to keep warm. I couldn't wait for that sun to come up. And there's nobody to talk to, you know, everybody's sleeping. Or... Here's Paul, uh, here we are. Yeah, you can keep going. So then, uh, the one thing was the one, when you come into the coast, you know, you come into the station, you have that tunnel, and the, we were getting a headache just from the roar of the strobes. So we asked them to shut the strobes off, but we still, you know, so I got ear plugs, and it really helped a lot. Uh, here's everybody sleeping. Uh, you know, so there was four of it. Well, before this happened, I have to explain to you what happened. It was, we call it the wild ride. The wild ride was a guy there who said he wanted to make us, he wanted us to do more laps faster. And the whole point of endurance is don't make us go faster, just let us stay on it, but go a little slower. And he sped us up. We were doing about 21 laps an hour. He wanted to speed up to 25. And I'm like, no, don't do that. Anyway, he came up on the station, and if you remember, and I talked to Mike about this, uh, they had, today they have pitch, pitch breaks. And back then they had four sled breaks. In other words, one past the tunnel, one just before the station, one in the station, and one in the least station. So there's four four sets of breaks. He shut them off. <laughs> <laughs> and we ended up uh, we ended up going through the station at very high speed. Uh, and all I remember him staying there with the big with the, with the you know those four sets of breaks and he talked. It's not stopping. <laughs> the back of the train as it goes around a turn. So we go around that turn about, I don't know, 25, 
30 miles an hour. And so they shut us down. And the nice thing about having a marathon on a double coaster is they just switched us to the other side so we could continue. And anyway, I got off. Uh, you can stop here, Jeff, for a second. I got off, uh, and the, and the uh, nurse said to me, Well, your blood pressure is very low, so either, either you're very tired or you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> And I had, a, I had a pain that went from here to the back of my head, right in the middle of my head, this pain. It was like a throbbing. And I go, that's not good. So I stepped, she said, take a break for an hour, you accumulate time. I took a break. One of the guys, one of the guys on here had, had eight hours of accumulating time. He drove down to Richmond and had Chinese food. <laughs> so, in any case, uh, you know, I'm just trying to do all the good things. Uh, you know, after this wild ride, uh, Paul Green was, he was he was tired, frozen, and he got off. And he was down to four of us. Uh, then I got off. And what had happened is Booker McClay, the publicist from Universal, he said uh, he was down at the bottom with the with the cable, you know, the, the uh, television crews and stuff. And he says, uh, what, uh, no, the how do you say it? I said, I'm done. You have to officially sign a paper because it's Guinness. I'm done. So I finished 50 hours and 21 minutes. Okay. Booker McClay was at the bottom of the ramps. There's, there's a different setup than today because it would have taken him an hour to get around. <laughs> but he, he's at the bottom and he, you could see the word of mouth was going down. Richard's off. And I was his savior because I'm dealing with a table to talk, you know, these guys are So he gets up on the platform and he's screaming at me. I'm sitting on a cot going, what? You, know, you gotta get on. You gotta... And then the train went through with these three guys on. He goes, these are vegetables. I can't talk to them. <laughs> and you know what? James Goldstone came up and he said, Richard made a decision. He signed it. He's done. And he just said, oh, you can't be. You know, we can reverse that. <laughs> I'm not right. I'm done. I'm done. So I was very happy to get off. I slept for basically 24 hours after that. Um, you can keep going, Jeff. You raise your hand when you wanted to stop. We had a, we had an RV at the bottom, uh, with a, obviously with a river toilet. We were allowed to eat anything we wanted. We ate during the ride. We drank during the ride. That's no lobby. Now here, I took this photo, uh, I was heading back to New York, I had to go back to work. And <laughs> I took this photo on the left when they had told me secretly they had decided, because it would be one winner, three of them were going to win, three of them were going to do it together and walk off. Universal didn't know that. Uh, they were looking for one winner. The winner would get $3,000 and a trip to Hollywood. So these three guys said, you know, we're not going to try to we become friends, we're not going to compete, we're just going to end it at a certain point. They didn't know when. So you can keep moving. They're checking their time, they wanted to see, they wanted to be very specific, and they essentially ended it at 101 hours. And that's no other thing. So there you go. Now, uh, when I had gotten off, I was in the, I was in the, um, in the offices of Mr. Siegel and with James Goldstone, the director. And I uh, was sitting there and the phone rang and it was a reporter from the Richmond, I don't know, I don't remember, yeah, Rich, Richmond uh, Times leader. And uh, the Richmond Times leader, the woman, woman on the phone said, and I, and I quote, we talked about, she says, do you think that you could have sex now? <laughs> And then, the following year, Richard Rodriguez broke all the records on the cyclone. So it was Richard that night that I visited him at the cyclone. Tornado in Coney Island uh, had a fire in the, in the 
late 70s, 70s, 78, I guess it was. 77? 78. The left, the, whatever. So anyway, there's a fire. We go down there. Uh, it had to be late 77. Be yeah, because uh, the next photo. Uh, Paul Greenwald, the Reverend Fouts, we went down to take a look at the damage. Uh, the next shot is Roy. Roy would stay in the car because he was frozen and he didn't want to get picked up by the police. For one reason, I don't know. He shouldn't be here, he's scared. And I said, Roy, there's nobody here. This place is barren. Anyway, we did end up taking some wheels. Uh, <laughs> anyway, second fire uh, came and this was the result of, this is not the result of the fire, this is the result of the demolition. <coughs> So the coaster was removed, and I took I took a extensive amount of photos, and I'm sharing about five here. I was devastated by this loss, absolutely devastated. It was what was one of the most beautiful, wonderful, small rides that uh, you know. Mike Boodley, he looked at this and he goes, "I can do this." The team, some of his rides reflect that. That's Richard Rodriguez. In the mess. Just, just horrible. Uh, met with Paul. We started to discuss the uh, possibility of, you know, what the convention was going to be. We ended up, we found out that the Loch Ness monster was going to be built. No name at the time, but uh, Roy started to call Bush Gardens, and he called twice a day. <laughs> started to become uh, some more shots of Paul with his mom. Thank you, Ben. Good. Anyway, so we ended up, they ended up setting up a meeting with uh, Bush Gardens, with their publicity department. And we ended up, you can hold up here, we ended up uh, driving, I, I Trick took the train down to Washington. We ended up, uh, Roy picked me up. Paul was driving down from Niagara Falls. He was three hours late. We're driving to Williamsburg, uh, three hours late. And I said, you know, guys, we should call and let them know we're going to be late. And I was remember Paul turned around. Don't worry about it. Well, uh, we get down to Bush Gardens at 8 o'clock at night. This is, you know, this is April. The park's not open. We pull up to the employee entrance. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> he gave it away. He says, uh, we don't have you on the list, and uh, Mr. Mr. Hunt is not here. So he said, I'll give him, so, so I remember Paul saying, well, I drove from Niagara Falls, and you know, I expect to have a meeting, you're not on our list. So he called Hunter, and Hunter came over to the park in his Cadillac. We got into his Cadillac, and he drove through that park so fast, I never been through a park that fast in the back seat, turns through the castle, I don't know what was going on, in the dark. <laughs> And, and Paul got very upset because why are you driving so fast? I know this park in the back of my hand. So, anyway, we got to his office. Uh, Roy and Paul led the meeting. I didn't know. I, I was the third wheel, so to speak. And so Roy and Paul led the meeting and said, uh, you know, we made demands. And this guy, he wasn't happy. He wasn't happy about us being late, and he wasn't happy about the demands. So. I, I was really feeling bad, and I, and I, I was sort of in the background, and I, I said, Mr. Hunter, I said, can I speak to you privately? And I was with Paul going, what? I said, well, I'm going to, so I took him into another office, and I said, I don't, you know, we're new at this, we're all, we're all basically strangers, we're learning, you know, we're learning the ropes, but we would really like to have this convention at your park, we will do anything you ask, and you, I'll be your contact, and you will get an answer if you do. And he says, I will do it only for one reason. And I go, what's that? And he goes, make Roy stop calling us. <laughs> <laughs> so John Hunter uh, was a good guy. He was the head of public relations. I thought he was a general manager. Here are some shots coming up here. Uh, This is basic one. A very few photos I have of them. So I like I like Paul's uh, shirt a lot. So the next morning we stayed in uh, we stayed in some cheap hotel in Richmond near the airport. Fighter pilots were flying over. I don't know what was going on. 
Yeah, I got a number. I needed to ride back to Washington to catch my train out of the Union Station. And uh, we walked out here and we went to a restaurant. He said, We got some news for you. He says, Ryan and I are going down to Six Flags, Georgia, and you're on your own. And I go, I don't, know, I don't know how to get back to Washington. And he says, You're a big boy. <laughs> and it was reminiscent of a time when they visited me in New York. And they stayed for one night and a second night. And the third night was a Saturday, and I had a date with my girlfriend, Carol, and at the time. And I said, well, you guys can stay, but I have a date. And Paul says to me, this is before pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, have a good time with Roy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was quite an interesting, interesting character. So, anyway, there they go. They're on their way to Georgia, and Richard's stuck in Bird Airport in Richmond, Virginia. I had a friend who lived a little close by, picked me up, took me up to Union Station. We're done. Here's uh, John Hunter with the construction of the Loch Ness. Oh, so I missed, missed part of the story. This is the most important part. This is the one everybody's been waiting for. Uh, on the way out of the park, we had been in, the, in his office probably about 35, 40 minutes. And on the way out of the park, Roy says, can we see the Loch Ness Monster? And, and John Hunter says, there's no lights. Well, you know, we can't pull this away, can we just see it? So, I remember Hunter going like, okay, you know. So he drives all the way over to the bottom of the lift hill, and we're looking at this in the dark. There's no construction lights, it's just there, it's in the dark, you know. So Roy goes, hey, can we climb to the top? <laughs> So, so John Hunter goes, no. And so Paul goes, yeah, why can't we just go up the, you know, walk up the trailer? Walk up the catwalk. So we go up the catwalk. <laughs> so it was, it was Paul, Roy, myself, and John Hunter. He says, guys, be real careful, hold on to the handrail, let's walk up. In the dark. So we're walking up, and so Hunter grabs my arm, pulls me back, and he says, uh, because Roy, Roy was walking up and going, you know, we're rising 113 feet above the Thames River, we're going to travel around 3,000 feet. Or, you know, he's just reading off of a, a you know, spec sheet. And, and John Hunter, and I can't use his language, but he says, your, your friend up there is a real genius. <laughs> <laughs> so we end up, uh, so he goes, hold back, he says, the catwalk is incomplete. <laughs> So Roy and Paul walking up, and also you hear Roy, you hear Paul go, Holy mackerel, it stopped! There was nothing there! He goes, all right, guys, come back down. <laughs> so I talked to Hunter a couple of years later, or I should say that, that's a convention. I, I said, you know, did, were you going to stop them? He says, well... He says, <laughs> <laughs> They were not supposed to be in the park. <laughs> so that, that's that story. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I did get some bad news. I did get in touch with uh, Connie DeSaunier, who was the PR person who was in charge of the event. And she told me the bad news. I think it's in the next slide. Or at least I think it is. If we get to it. Well, I guess not. All right, it's another thing. Anyway, he, he, he did pass away. He had a heart attack about 10 years ago, so he's no longer with us. Uh, some of the early stuff that went out, this went out during Christmas of 77. Season's greetings and the, the initial plans, and we sent it to all the people that were on our list, Carmel's list. We had a list of about 600 names or actresses, and we sent it out. We keep going. This is the official uh, paper that went out. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Joe, did I spit on you yet? Uh, th th this is one. Of the, this is the form you filled out for registration. Has anybody seen the top? The third, uh, where it says convention fees. Eight dollars. And ten dollars if you were late. And you know how many people complained? I'm not paying ten dollars. <laughs> so we ended up, uh, yeah, 
uh, he apologized for us. They took care of everything. They took care of the meals, the free admission for two days. Uh, they did a lot. We did the. We, we came out of that convention and they said the suite was full of beer. And there's more beer in there than uh, I, I was worried about the floor blocks. You can keep going. That was all the information. That's the uh, original uh, schedule. So here we are. My, my future wife, myself, and Jeffrey driving in his Honda Civic. <laughs> driving down to Virginia. I don't know what Carol's doing there. I think she's. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jeffrey Mommen on the right. Uh, and Jeffrey's right here. So we have one guy there. Here we are, right? Look at the size of that car. <laughs> and, and of course, the interest was a you know a thousand photographs of this. I'll show you a few. You've seen it before. But, uh, <laughs> this was the big thing for them. This was a major attraction. Uh, John Hunter became almost you know a, a, a household name on, on local TV because this was this was his baby, and he wanted it to be treated right. So we can keep going. We stayed at the uh, Fort Magruder West, Best Western in Williamsburg. I only have a few photos of the interior, but I'll show them and share them. There's our, there's our schedule for two days. I'll have to give this to Ted Wall so you can put it I only have a few photos. Uh, Gary Curie is in the left. In the background is George Cecil. Uh, Scott Campbell's in the middle, that was part of his film crew, and that's Connie Bissonnier, uh, who was a PR director, or uh, was an event director. This is Russell Allen Herr, who did the Bush, the, sorry, the uh, Yuval Beach book with Lee Bush. There's uh, a young Mike Boodley. <laughs> and I think, that, I think his, uh, the friend we brought was Bonnie Pignac. Yeah, I remember that. And we got out there to see the Loch Ness. There's a catwalk we walked up that wasn't complete. <laughs> I wish I had photos of that. <laughs> Keep going. Fine. There's Jeffrey and my wife, or my future wife. There's Carol. Uh, next shot. She, you got to remember something. Carol was not a coaster enthusiast. So when I took her down to Rockaway to ride the coaster at Rockaway, she wrote it once. She said, don't ever do that to me again. <laughs> <laughs> so this was you know, sort of a stretch for her. But she, she knew, you know, I was passionate about it. I was really into it. She sort of tagged along. Been tagging along for 40 years. <laughs> thinking there. <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, boy, is, is this going to work? I don't know. Anyway, here's Mike. Now, these are some black and whites. That's Connie Dissonier on the right. And I, I think Carol took these. I don't remember. But anyway, a couple photos. Uh, the one, so that's her. Today, that's, this is about 10 years ago. She's an artist in Williamsburg. She does a lot of large paintings. And, Things like that. And she was going to be here, but she had to go to a Bruce Hornsby concert. <laughs> she's a Williamsburg guy, so she can't change that. So she's not here tonight. Really nice. There's John Hunter and Connie. John Hunter had passed away in 2007. So that was news to me. I was very surprised. Some of the people that showed up were uh, the Hoolies, Bob and Elaine Hooley, and on the left, and Mike and his wife, Edward, Mike Edwards and his wife, on the right. <laughs> it is the war time, it was one of the marathons that lasted an hour with her daughter. Uh, the daughter was, uh, for whatever reason, Paul was really in love with his daughter, so he ended up spending a lot of time with her riding and what have you, which was fine. Uh, three original characters, you know, there's a lot of, there's only 50 people here and I'm trying to, 
Uh, Clarence and George, I mean, Clarence is on the left, Clarence Heights, George Berber, they were partners for 60 years out of the Army. Uh, both have passed on in the, recently. Uh, John Carruthers in the middle, and uh, we'll keep moving. We'll keep moving. We don't want to uh, Richard Rodriguez was there. Uh, that's a whole other story, and I'm not going to get into it. But, uh, <laughs> He uh, really, he showed up at one, he was coming from the Swampbox Marathon, took the train up to Williamsburg, calls me in the room, says, I need a lift from the, I said, can't you get a cab? And he says, there's no cabs, nobody here. So my friend Joe was at the convention, we drive over to the Williamsburg station, which was about uh, five miles, and we get to the station, there's eight cabs lined up. <laughs> and Joe was not happy, but anyway, uh, these are just some general photos. There's my wife on the left, wondering if she's going to ride. Okay. <laughs> and it's Robert Carmel on the right, and Charlie Jacques in the middle, and the guy standing up on the thing is uh, John Waldrop. Let me keep going. Alan Ambrosini is in the middle. Kiriazzi, Rodriguez. We never figured out who those two guys were in the back. <laughs> That's another problem. Roy was in debt registration. I asked him for the for the list. I kept asking him, and I never saw a list. So there's some people that are missing in action. There's Carruthers, Cole Greenwald. There's George Cecil in the middle. There's Jeffrey on the left. My friend Joe Orlick. You can see you can see Rutherford on the right there with that blonde mane. What happened to that blonde hair? Now Mike Danshaw. And then Mr. Betsy's uh, uh, brother is in the picture. This he was the youngest guy there. He wasn't really, he wasn't really Scott Rutherford. <laughs> Dan Shaw is there talking to uh, George Cecil. The two guys we don't know who they are. <laughs> you can see the young, uh, the young uh, Scott Rutherford. That was a weird. <laughs> so these are the general shots that I photographed. There's, there's Paul making his move on for your wartime story. George Barber, Robert Carmel on the left, Roy Brashears, the woman there, she's a very important political, uh, she works for the Washington Post, so she's a big shot now, so I looked her up. Uh, Joe Barner and Alan Ambrose. And George Cecil on the left, I think, Frank that we brought with him. This is a good shot of Dan Shaw and the Abrams, the three Abrams. Uh, uh, Betsy's father passed away as well. Her, she lost her son to uh, her brother in this photo. So she's the only one in the photo that's alive of those four. Uh, what I do remember about your father, Betsy, is that I was starving. We, we were just, you know, doing everything, and he, he brought me a Big Mac. It's a Big Mac, but she did I'm like, oh, it's like exciting. Uh, it was crazy. You guys would really want to be president? I mean, it's like, you know. Anyway, the group photo, uh, Connie is in the corner, bottom fifth corner next to John Hunter. You see, uh, you see John, you see Jeffrey Lawman and uh, Curiosity, you see the Abrams in the middle, <coughs> Scott Rutherford, Richard Rodriguez on the right. Uh, top row from left to right is Boodley, my wife, Carol, Richard. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Paul Greenwell with the girl he met. Uh, <laughs> John Carruthers, Roy Brashears, Paul, uh, Robert Carmel, and one of the guys we don't know. <laughs> Alan Ambrosini is in the second row, three from the right. John <coughs> Shaw, George Berber, John Waldrop. Uh, you, you have to remember how this affects me because some of them are no longer with us, and, and they were good. They were part of this team. It's sort of like, eh. Now we're now we're going to ride this. There's Jeffrey trying to find out how tall is this? You know, <coughs> control panel. Betsy and Scott in the front seat. They they were essentially the youngest people at the convention, except for the young man in the back. There's Paul. There's Roy. The gentleman on the left is Dennis Boyles. He's a reporter who lives in France. Been in touch with him now. He doesn't remember much about the event. George is fixing his hair. There's a uh, wall drop with Rodriguez, and in the back is just uh, Charlie Jacques. Left side. And here's Woodley and I. And this is, the, he told me later this was the ride that got him started on his new company. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
Inside the uh, Best Western, we're putting up sh pictures, and uh, that's me, and then there's a couple shots here. We don't have much, which is sad. Uh, that's what I put up on the wall. Uh, those are photos I had taken in the last two years. You can keep going. <laughs> Society. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, some of the when I when, when I was asked to be president, one of the names that came up was roller coaster boosters. <laughs> <laughs> RCB, you know, IHOP, we changed the name. <laughs> but uh, I like the Richie Munch up there. A Manhattan banker. I have no idea where that came from. I did work in a bank with Jeffrey. But it wasn't from Manhattan Bank. Then there was Coaster Mania at Cedar Point about a month later. We had our meetings there. Uh, they were doing a study of the Bowling Green State University. It was a study on why we ride roller coasters. And the final, uh, the conclusion of three days of this was that uh, we have a connection with our mothers. <laughs> Anyway, close to me again. I'm going to go through this real quick. I don't have a clicker. This is John Carruthers. Alan and Lucy. The articles that came out, we did a lot of, lot of press, which got us more members, which was good. Uh, you can keep going. I, somebody sent this to me. It's the only thing I have. I, I thought that was pretty cool. I have no idea what it is. I think it's up in New England. Yeah. Roy Brashear is about 10 years ago. And that's uh, the three of us and uh, King's Dominion. And then there's a final shot. That's the last shot I have of the three of us. Uh, it was very hard. Paul never wanted to get the photo with us. But I said, yeah, what the heck. So we're up in... Uh, up in Maryland, taking this. Um, as you know, Paul is no longer with us, and uh, you know, I miss, I miss some of his spirit, but you know, I really hadn't talked to him in many years. So, I miss him. Uh, you can keep going. <laughs> we already saw this, I'm sorry about that. Is there any more? Okay, uh, I'm coming up to the end of my thing. I had more to show you, but we've run out of time. But I got one thing I would like to do, John Carruthers, uh, which I never got to, but John Carruthers was the guy that got me, got me into history, and writing, writing roller coasters, and understanding all this stuff. He was just magical, magical guy. He is a magical guy. Um, he's just going to turn, uh, he's in his 80s. Anyway, 
talked to him the other night, he's having some health issues. But we, uh, he sent a letter, and I'm going to ask Frank Zuri, who's a, also a good friend, to read the letter. And I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, John was really important. Uh, I met him pre-ace. Uh, Robert Clark gave us each other's names. Um, after his article came out, I could call him long distance, pay a lot of money for a phone call. And uh, that's how it's all. I started there, yep. And we would get back. So, Alright, this is from John Brothers. <clears throat> Dear 2018 ACE Convention attendees, subject, 40 years ago, exclamation point. Goodness Gregorius gracious, how time flies. As the older we get, the quicker time seems to move, doesn't it? Um, how well I remember attending the 1978 first ACE convention at Bush Gardens in Williamsburg, 40 years ago. <laughs> we were all younger there, weren't we? <laughs> Who, anybody else here was here at that time? Who else was there? Scotty? I didn't even think you are 40. <laughs> you folks aren't even that old. Okay. Well, amusement parks were younger then, too, and different. When I was a kid, four years old, my mother and father took me regularly to the Fairgrounds Amusement Park since, 2000, since 1923 in Memphis, Tennessee. Many, many of these rides are rarely seen on the amusement park landscape today. In 2018, you now see rides and attractions that were not even thought about in 1978. In addition to good memories of of good friends from the American Coast Enthusiasts, I have one specific memory. The Ace Convention, I forget the year, held in Denver, Colorado at Lakeside Park. At that convention banquet, uh, the park manager and owner, Rona, Rhoda Krasner, spoke so eloquently about how she had noticed that Ace people are not only passionate about roller coasters and amusement parks, but many, and this is true, are also passionate about worthwhile and family and godly values. To all in attendance at this year's convention, have an enjoyable and wonderful experience, and when on a coaster, don't forget to scream. <laughs> if you know John, picture that. And he has in parentheses, Yahoo! Yeah, yeah. Ride em, cowboy. <laughs> Everyone should have one in their backyard. <laughs> and of course, Geronimo. Love John Carruthers. Well, I have a lot of stuff to show you, but we're kind of short on the time, so if, which is fine. I think we've covered it at the beginning. Uh, the question is, is there a future for Ace? And I, want to, I want to say that the future of Ace is probably about half the people in this room is the future of Ace. I think there's room for volunteers, there's room for passion, there's room for writing, there's room for growing and part of this. But your role part is to keep this going. Uh, I'm hoping that you might come back in about 10 years for the 50th. We'll see. And, yeah. um, we changed our logo, but I think we may be very close to changing our name because we've become very international. And, you know, if we change our name, it should be maybe International Coaster Enthusiast Ice. <laughs> uh, finally, uh, take, pride, take pride in the organization, take pride in the volunteers and 
everybody here who's worked so hard to make this happen. Um, I never got to my Marty Mulch, Mulch jokes. I never got to my Harry Sykes photos. And it would have been fun. You would have had some laughs. But uh, all good people all take a ribbing. David Lipnicki, I've picked on. I've picked on a lot of people here. But I love you all, and I appreciate you coming out, hearing me, coming to this event, and I hope that you continue to do it no matter who the president is. Please keep coming out and, and keep us strong. All right, guys?